Leading the NBA in triple doubles? Check. First in rebounds? That's also true. Six in assists while being a center? Yup. MVP candidate by an official NBA website? Absolutely. Am I talking about Nikola Jokic? No, it's Domantas Sabonis and despite all of these insane statistical facts, he is somehow not in the all-star game this year. We all know it is often nothing more than a popularity contest, but when the NBA coaches did not pick him as a reserve, many people were shocked. You got Demontis Sabonis averaging 19.9 points, so we just gonna give him 20. 13 rebounds and eight assists and the Kings are in fifth place. Now that's interesting. Is he the biggest all-star snub ever? Or is NBA tired of Europeans dominating the league? Okay, okay, let's not look for conspiracy theories, but here's why I believe the Sacramento big guy not being there is scandalous to say the least. Oh, look at that look away. Domas, magic support. Could you guess the last time the NBA triple-double leader was not in the all-star game? It was when Lance Stevenson led the league with only five of those 10 years ago. But that was quite understandable. Born Ready was averaging only 14, 7, and 5. This year, NBA coaches decided Steph Curry, Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Devin Booker, and Anthony Davis deserved a spot on the bench more than Domantas Sabonis. Every manager had to pick three frontcourt players, two backcourt guys, and two wildcards. Meaning those last two guys could have been anyone not looking at their position. And somehow, Domantas Sabonis did not make the cut. The stats are telling that the guy is doing basically everything. He is averaging an astonishing 20 points, 13 rebounds and 8 assists. On top of that, Sacramento were 5th in the West when voting results were announced, as they were in the top 5 for the majority of the regular season. You want more stats? One of the NBA's front office's most used advanced analytical stat, LeBron, which accumulates for the player's overall impact on the court says Sabonis should have been a starter in the All-Star game. So a starter by one of the most refined metrics and not even on the bench by fans, media and coaches. How? The Kings ended up having zero All-Stars while some of the lower seeds have one or two, for example the LA Lakers. For a league that thrives on analytics and different statistical perspectives and records, that's suspicious. And while everybody, including myself, understand that LeBron James will be in the All-Star game until he retires, few raised an eyebrow for the selection of Anthony Davis simply because the Lakers are hanging around the play-in zone for the whole regular season. But this is not a selection I'm most mad about. Los Angeles are a top two market in the NBA, Anthony Davis is playing a wonderful season while being the most important guy on that team and he shouldn't get punished because LeBron was already in as a starter. However, I do want to point out that Sabonis is 8-0 all time versus Anthony Davis in regular season matchups. The main point of discussion here should be how Carl Anthony Towns or Paul George make it over Domantas Sabonis. Only because their teams had a few more wins at the time of the selection? Do four wins outweigh such a huge statistical difference? PG is averaging 2.5 points more than Domantas but has 8 rebounds less, while his passes create only 9 points per game. Sabonis is actually 5th in the entire league in points created per game with 21.7. That's almost 13 points plus against Paul George. Carl Anthony Towns creates only 7.2 points for others. The main thing here is that I don't think people actually realize how much easier the game is when you have centers like Domas. They act as offensive hubs and operate around the three-point line or the elbows. There is a reason why Sacramento last season had the fifth best offensive rating in the entire history of the NBA. Those handoffs with Sabonis at the top have become a blueprint for almost every NBA team how to run their offense. Everybody would love to do so, but in order to execute that efficiently, the big guy must be a great passer that Sabonis is. Look at how much space there is for cuts to the basket when the big guy is at the top. Guards get three points every night just because of moving without the basketball. Such spacing and modern offensive philosophy are the main reasons we see offensive growth like never before. Instead of the ball handler struggling to prepare the pick and roll and gain advantage, Damas and his handoff 
allows, allow the guards to receive the ball in rhythm and with some separation already. For shooters like Kevin Huerter, this means simple catch and shoot attempts, while for De'Aaron Fox or others, it allows to go downhill and make decisions in the paint. Often Sabonis himself is the beneficiary later, rolling quickly to the rim and finishing there. That's Gonzaga on Gonzaga crime! Enjoying this video so far? Please subscribe to our channel for a chance to win an original Yanis jersey. We are giving it out to one lucky person once we hit 150k subs, so don't miss out and subscribe now. Sacramento have three basic ways of how they include Sabonis. We have already witnessed the first one. The second is elbow action with off-ball screens. Some of these find the receiver in the slightest of spaces, leaving his job simple, just laying it in into the basket. While Carl Anthony Towns and Paul George are of course way more talented scorers, Sabonis creates an even bigger amount of total points with his passing. Of course, he can score as well. Apart from being a solid roller to the rim in pick and rolls, they often look for him in the post. Sacramento's spacing allows him to go to work where he mostly uses his body and shot fakes. Defenders have to do their job one-on-one. -on -one. If others help, that's a wide open attempt for Damas' teammates since Sacramento's spacing and Damas' vision is a deadly combo. Oh, and that fifth best offense in NBA history? The ability of Sabonis orchestrating a fast break was a huge part of it too. Averaging 13 rebounds per game, Sabonis often have a chance of igniting the action, dribbling all the way to the other side. You can be sure he will find the runners with him or shooters that wait in the corners. That's the modern day basketball for you and trust me, every coach in the NBA would love to have a big guy like Sabonis, Jokic or Shangun. Sabonis, That's your center. Six assists. Right? That's your center. Passing vision, basketball IQ is what makes Sabonis unique. It's what separates Damas from 95% of other bigs in the league. So I go back to the question again. How Saban is finished lower in the coaches voting than Cat or PG? The ironic part is that Damantas actually finished higher than Carl Anthony Towns in the initial voting by media, players and fans. Paul George was higher and I can get that. He's been a household name in the NBA for much longer, he plays in LA and markets play an immense part in all-star votings. Representing a small market like Sacramento does not help, that's for sure. But to show such a disrespect to a player who even the official NBA MVP ladder has as an MVP candidate? How was that possible? Yes, the selection theoretically should be based solely on this season. But psychologically, I wonder if big names like Cat or Port George did not impact the coaches just a little bit. Keeping in mind that Sabonis hasn't had much playoff success as co-leader of the Sacramento team, that might have been the deciding factor. Is it fair? I don't think so. Although we probably shouldn't be looking for fairness in the all-star selections. There was another interesting explanation of why NBA triple-double leader did not make it. Reddit commentators and even Draymond Green himself thought that maybe De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis split some votes. De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis probably pulled votes from each other because they probably would both be wild cards. You this know. might be the case but hey, Kawhi plus Paul George and Anthony Edwards plus Carl Anthony Towns somehow made it from the same team. Another thought on Twitter was that Sabonis lacks charisma in order to make the All-Star game. I'm sorry, what are we looking for here if the guy's actions speak louder than anything else? He even has better averages than last year when he was voted in by the coaches. I guess Sabonis will have to do something big with Sacramento in the playoffs for people to recognize his greatness once again. Until that, all these triple doubles and amazing plays won't be enough. Do you agree that Sabonis should have been an all-star? And is he the most disrespected player in the NBA right now? I want to hear your opinions in the comment section down below. Don't forget to drop a like and I'll see you in the next one.